Snorlax has been an absolute juggernaut since the very beginning. The OG Sleepy Big Fella has an insane base 160 HP, paired with solid defensive and attack stats. It's one of the only Pokemon who stayed super consistent since the start of the franchise, and with its thick fat ability which halves damage from fire and ice moves, can make it a pain to knock out. We give our dude the ability to set up with Curse, and before you know it, Snorlax can deal massive damage and be a monster to handle. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Hey, if you enjoy my content, you should also follow me over on Twitch. I'm streaming there all the time, doing lots of Nuzlocke challenges and just hanging out. And if you're into that kind of thing, you should definitely check it out. Let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Fortress. I decide to toss out none other than the absolute goat, Picasso. And see, Pikachu doesn't want much to do with the, with the Fortress. This thing's a wall, he's a nut, he's a wall nut, and we're not having uh, the best matchup here. So I'm just gonna go for the Volt Switch. And with that Light Ball, it's actually going to do a nice little chunk of damage. And as it turns out, the Fortress is holding the red card. Basically, he says, you get the hell out of here, Pikachu. like, I was on my way out anyway. But what that does is, doesn't allow me to choose what comes in. So it actually drags out Snorlax. And Tubby's basically here saying, hey, I like nuts. This is actually not a bad time for me. While I imagine the Fortress is likely going to want to try to set up as many hazards as possible, that's kind of what these things do. So while I imagine they're going to be preoccupied with that, I'm going to start to set up some curses. And one of my favorite parts about Snorlax is how he's looking down at the Fortress saying, hey, I'm going to eat you. So with a nice little plus one in attack and defense, Snorlax is actually already looking pretty solid here. And I also have the Sigis Berry for the longevity, and I'm feeling like, hey, hold on, this thing is about to pop off. So they decided to just go for some spikes. They're thinking, hey, I'm going to lay as many Legos down on that side of the field as possible, so when, you know, stuff switches in, I'm gonna have a bad time with pivots, but I'm really feeling like now I'm just gonna go for an Earthquake, get some solid damage with that plus one attack here, as they again just go for another layer of spikes. So I don't have any hazard removal, but I'm willing to trade off basically them setting up as many hazards as they want for Snorlax to be able to I kind of do what it needs to do here. So, of course, the Walnut does live the Earthquake nicely, but one more should be able to kill. And then I can finish off this matchup actually at full health as they decide to go for another layer of Spike. So, it's not looking good for me in the long game. They're playing for the long game out here as they have three layers of, of Spikes and that Stealth Rock up. However, I now have a plus one attack and defense Snorlax who does look pretty ready here. An Earthquake finishes off the Fortress and now they get a free switch into whatever they like. So, they decide to go into Slowking here. Now, this thing likely can take a plus one crunch for me, and their best bet is to go for something like a Scald and try to get a burn. Uh, but realistically, with my special defense, it's not gonna do anything. So they go for that hot water, luckily are not able to get the burn, and I just take a nice little bite out of his belly, and that's gonna be an easy two hit KO. So at this point, I'm thinking, a Body Slam actually both knocks it out and covers for a switch. So that's exactly what I'm gonna go for. Predicting that switch is obvious because of the regenerator ability. That thing's gonna be able to come back in later with some more health. So I go for the Body Slam here and they decide to go into the Heracross. So predicting the Earthquake, they bring this thing in. Unfortunately for them, they get laid on and that is gonna do a bunch of damage. So it doesn't quite knock it out, but what I can do here is predict the fighting move and go for my Terra. This is exactly why we like to run the Ghost Terra on Snorlax because their best option for damage here is going to be this Heracross. But I put the Ghostly Boy on my head and now you're just going to punch right through me. So they do end up going for the Brick Break here. Of course, that doesn't even touch me. And we can then finish this thing off with the Body Slam. So that's kind of their best check to the Snorlax. And we already grabbed ourselves a nice little kill, got some damage on the Slow King. And this bear is going on an absolute rampage. Ursa Luna who, for real, Gen 1 bear, best bear. So. Now they decide to go into Typhlosion, and I'm thinking I'm not going to go for the Earthquake because the, you know, the Terra is obvious here. They've seen that I have the Earthquake coverage. I'm just going to go for that Stab Body Slam, always with that chance to paralyze. It's just a good move with that Stab. So they actually end up going for the Terra, and it's going to be the Grass Terra. So that covers for the Earthquake, um, and it also is going to allow them to go for a Solar Beam. You're thinking, hey, that's going to take you two turns. However, this thing is going to be carrying the Power Herb, which allows them to use essentially a two-turn move in one turn. And check this out. This thing is now extremely powerful. It has the Stab on the Solar Beam, which is already extremely high base power. And Tubby absolutely eats that. Not only that, but we also eat our Citrus Berry with our natural special bulk. This thing is actually insane. So Citrus Berry brings me to a super reasonable amount of health. And our Body Slam is not quite going to knock it out, but it's going to easily put it in chip range. So. Now they decide to go for the Shadow Ball, they do have the Ghost coverage, but again, we out here way too bulky, boy. Even you hit me on the physical side with the defense boost, I'm still a you know, force to be reckoned with. But on the special side, we don't even need any help. So that's going to take care of Typhlosion. They also burned their Terra, which is always amazing to see. 
and we are going on a nice little tear here uh, with the boys. So now they decide to go into the Dragonite, and this is going to put them in a spot where they actually cannot go for a Dragon Dance. Instead, they go for the Thunder Punch, actually get the critical hit, which knocks out the Snorlax, but not before we were able to absolutely punch some holes in their team. So while we are feeling pretty solid about our momentum here, unfortunately now we have to deal with switching into all the hazards and just kind of seeing if we can break the rest of their team. So I decided to go into the Mamoswine. Now, the best thing about this matchup is that since they already use their Terra, they actually can't go for the, the usual kind of Terra normal extreme speed. So what I can do is just go for a nice little Ice Shard, um, but they are gonna actually end up switching the Dragonite out. And they're gonna go back into the Slow King here, which I'm generally fine with. This thing comes in, it gets that Regenerator, so it's sitting at you know, a, a little over half at this point after the Ice Shard. And I'm really thinking that an Earthquake from this range should be able to finish this thing off kind of depending on the build. So I go for the Earthquake here, and unfortunately it's barely able to live, which then is going to allow it to fire off a Scald, and down goes the Mamoswine. So that's actually really not good for me, considering Mamoswine's my best check uh, to that Dragonite. I now don't have access to the Ice Shard. And that is a situation where I wish I was running an Adamant Nature over the Jolly, but it is what it is, and, and at least now I can bring in Pikachu, who can actually grab ourselves a kill here. We nearly get destroyed uh, by the hazards here, but I decided to go for the Trailblaze to finish this off. Now what that's going to do is give Pikachu a nice little plus one boost in speed, and we are now going to be the fastest Mon on the field barring, you know, any priority, which they are going to have priority in the form of Dragonite. It was worth it for me just to go for that Trailblaze. Uh, for whatever reason, this thing wasn't carrying the priority, but Dragonite comes in, and they're actually just gonna go for that extreme speed. Of course, you literally breathe on Pikachu and it dies, so extreme speed easily knocks me out even without the Terra. Uh, and at this point, I gotta figure out an answer to the Dragonite, because this thing can actually get out of hand uh, pretty quickly here. So, what I'm gonna do is decide to bring in the Dusknoir. So, what Dusknoir can do is, while taking a bunch from the hazards, I can also then just hit it with a nice little Choice Banded Ice Punch, but the main thing is that we need to break this thing's Marvel scale. Essentially, when this thing's at full health, it has increased defense and it's really hard to take care of. So they're actually going to go for the Dragon Dance here. Now, we did actually frisk the fact that it has a weakness policy. Uh, I am fine going for the Ice Punch here regardless because I figure Bandit Ice Punch is still going to do a bunch of damage. And it also puts it pretty closely in range to where potentially Mian Shao can knock it out. But now with that extra boost, Extreme Speed is looking really scary. So here's an interesting play. It gets the Weakness Policy, it has a Dragon Dance, and at this point, I just go for another Ice Punch. It can Extreme Speed me here, and they opt to go for the Thunder Punch, which I'm barely able to live because Dusknoir is a beast. Um, they likely have Outrage as their final move slot on that thing, and the reason why they don't click it there is because then it opens the door for me and Shao to outspeed with the Choice Scarf, um, and they don't have the ability to switch moves into the Extreme Speed. So... Luckily, by the skin of our little ghostly teeth, we're able to take that Thunder Punch, uh, and that is extremely clutch. Dustnor often does live stuff that you, you should not live, but you love to see it, and now they get the Revenge Switch into the Lime Colored Tauros, um, which does end up knocking me out with the Iron Head, but I do still have the Scarf Me and Shao in the back, and with Dragonite gone, I can just bring in old Floppy. We're flopping around like crazy out here, and a close combat should be able to knock this thing out. Again, they don't have the access to the Terra. So we can just outspeed and go ahead and beat the devil out of the bowl. But here's where I figured they do have one win condition, and that comes in the form of if this Tauros is for some reason Focus Sash, it lives, knocks out the Mian Shao, and then kills the Venomoth. So what I decide to do instead is go for the U-turn. Now that's going to potentially break a Focus Sash. I can then go into Venomoth just for a nice little little sack here, and then I go back into Mian Shao, no worry of a Focus Sash, um, and then we can hopefully finish off the game. So they do go for the Zen Headbutt here. That, of course, does knock out the Venomoth. But whenever you got the Mian Shao in the back, there's always a way. Honestly, one of my favorite revenge killers is going to be this thing, especially with that Regenerator. Uh, you can pivot with fast U-turns and just always be at a respectable amount of health. So I bring in Floppy once more, and a close combat is going to finish off the Tauros. Now, I doubt that it was Focus Ash on this thing, uh, but it was just my safest play uh, at that point. Not having Hazards up really kind of uh, did limit me on you know the Dragonite having its Marvel Scale intact, plus the potential Focus Ash is not being broken. Uh, but that's going to finish off the game, and uh, honestly, a, a super fun match. So listen, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like on the video. I really do appreciate all the support lately, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.